How's it going, everybody? Rye Rad here today, and we are back with our Vancouver Canucks franchise mode. Uh, and a lot of you guys uh, made some pretty good suggestions at the end of last video. I saw, I was reading your guys' comments. Uh, one of you guys said to put Berchi on the first line instead of Goldobin. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and check out that check that out right now. Now the thing I'm hesitant about is Goldobin still got the opportunity to grow. Uh, but that's certainly something that if in this first month or two that we don't succeed, I will look to flip Berchi and Goldobin. But I'd like to get, actually, you know what? Goldobin still got a chance to grow. I'm going to play him in his role. So scratch everything I just said. I'm going to play him on the second line where he wants to play. Uh, I'm surprised Bo Horvat still listed as a second line forward, to be honest. I thought he might be a first line forward for us. He's an 86 overall, so I'd assume that. Anyway, um, you guys also said to put... Uh, Gaunt's at center for Pedersen because Elias Pedersen isn't good at faceoffs and Gaunt's is. So I'm going to agree with you guys there. Uh, puck control is important. So we'll have uh, Elias Pedersen centered by Gaunt's and with Vertan in there on the wing. Uh, Delian here. Yep, I still like him at center. So that was just my own little checking there. Uh, and you guys also said that there's some guys down in the minors, or not even in the minors, but guys that I have on the roster in the system that... Uh, need to grow and it would be, be it would be better beneficial if I gave them some ice time and I think I, I, I found out who you guys were talking about some of our best prospects I've yet to sign because I've been waiting for them to sh show to be a decent overall but I think you guys are right the fact that these guys should be playing right now so Rogalski here I definitely I, I definitely think Rogalski is a guy I need to start playing uh, right wing sniper he's already 64 medium elite Helmerson's 20 low elite and Connolly so that could even be a bottom line there down there in the AHL now the problem is we need to go ahead and get rid of some of the guys as well um so some guys that could go might be Castles he could be a decent player uh for some other teams as well as Molino here I mean I don't mind too much giving up these AHL top six uh talent players like uh yeah right here we could give uh Carcom Carcone, yeah, Carcone, Castles, and Molino here. These three guys. I think I'm gonna go ahead and I I can't um I'm not gonna offer them a contract extension, but I am gonna trade them away and then sign those three guys. We could have a real young, promising line down there in the AHL. I'll go ahead and set those lines up and everything. I won't just hit best lines. I'm gonna actually start to micromanage a little bit, so there might be a little bit more editing in the video, but that's okay as long as it goes well. I'm okay with that. So. We're going to see what, what who wants these guys. I'm not going to... I don't think I'm going to edit this part out for you guys because uh, th this is just AHL level players that um, see who might want Cas Castles, uh, Carcone, and then Molino. Yeah, I think those were guys. Actually, Zach McEwen here. Yeah, let's go with Stewart here. And yeah, so... I'm sorry. I'm just trying to figure out who I want to get rid of. And I think... Yes, there we go. Actually, Molino's not going to grow much more. Zach McEwen, Stewart, and Molino. Those three guys can go. If anybody wants them, I'll see who uh, might want these three players. Or just I could do one of them or two of them. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to move these guys, which is kind of unfortunate. But a team like um, New York Islanders, they, I, I don't think they're going to be too upset by giving up a seventh. They want to give up their seventh anyway. Um, so they would have more than 45 skaters in the organization. So let me go ahead and see. There we go. So we'll trade McEwen and Stewart for the Islanders seventh round. Hopefully that goes through. They accepted that trade. Awesome. We'll just go to roster moves. I, I don't need to really do anything. Uh, I'm not too worried about that either. Uh, we'll edit lines. I think it's just the AHL lines that are the ones screwed up. Yeah. So yeah, Castles, Boucher, Lind, best lines down there. They've got Comtois playing now. So that's actually kind of nice to see Comtois actually playing. I'd like him to play for us down there in the minors. Um, and then we'll go ahead and there's one more guy I wanted to trade away, probably get another seventh or something like that. Because I mean, right at this point, um, the New York Islanders are a rebuilder. They, I think, uh, yeah, John Tavares did leave in free agency. So he wants to, um, go ahead. Oh, you know what? I, I actually, this just popped in my mind right now. Any big name free agents, I'm going to give them like a two way contract and see where they go. Um, just, just to make it interesting, because they don't actually tell you where they go. It was Molino here, yeah. Let's see if we can find a rebuilding team out, like the Rangers. We'll just send them to New York for a draft pick. They want to give up their seventh. I'm okay with, oh, they would have too many skaters in the organization. That's great. Um, so let's go find somebody with enough, wow, so with enough contracts. Um, hopeful, hopeful champion, champion rebuilder. The Vegas Golden Knights, uh, they're not going to be too upset to part with a seventh year for a prospect. They could give him a shot. He could be decent for the AHL for them. And trade accepted. So there's a couple more sevenths. That's fine. We'll go ahead and offer those couple guys that with good potential a contract. 
Um, and then I'll go ahead and get the line set up for you guys, and I will show you just what uh, the AHL lines are going to look like. Because the NHL lines probably aren't going to change from what you guys said, and I've got those pretty much set. But let's go ahead here, offer those uh, few young, good-looking prospects some contracts, get them some playing time, and I will go ahead and edit the lines for you guys. So I'll show you. They're probably just going to be this standard rookie deal. But just in case you guys wanted to see what I give them here, like Rogalski, definitely. I, I, I completely overlooked Rogalski. He's a 64 at 19. He's definitely, you know, worthy of playing there in the minors. That's perfect. Um, let's see, Connolly. Oh, did he already sign? Wow, we don't even have to advance a day. They just accept it right away. That's actually kind of awesome. There we go. Conley has accepted, and then Helmerson here. Because I had to trade those three guys away because we didn't have enough contracts. And Helmerson, low elite potential, but I'd like to see him grow at age of 20. So they all have anxiety with their new team. Let me go ahead, guys, edit the AHL lines, and I will check in with you guys once I finish doing that. All right, guys, so here we go. These are going to be the AHL squad. Uh, we got Reed Boucher playing with Rodrigo Abels, who I'm putting up there on the top line. He may be a power forward, but he's got medium bottom 6'4 potential, so we're going to see if we can get him into that low 70 range, see if he can be that physical force on that fourth line maybe. And then we got Colin. We're giving him first line ice time down there in the AHL because he's 21, low top 6 and 70. So he's still got a good chance of growing and becoming something for us. i just really like to see him have a good season down there in the minors. Uh, and then we're going to play Maxime Comtois on that second line. Uh, with Mark Olivier Roy and Louis Erickson. So hopefully he's going to be able to bury the chances that uh, Louis Erickson and Roy give him. I mean, uh, these guys, these two guys aren't what I'm worried about. I'm just more worried about Comtois having a good season. Then the third line, we're going to move uh, Dennis Yan down there. He's medium bottom six forward. He's 74. Um, so I considered him playing him up on the second line, but I wanted to get Comtois growing more so than I wanted Yan to grow. Uh, Cole Castles as well. I mean, he's he's back just, just to get a decent center. Uh, and then Stukel here as well. So we got two guys on the outsides that are 23 with bottom six potential uh, and still could become something. Then our fourth line is our elite line. I mean, it's tech, overall wise, not elite, but it's our elite, elite potential line, guys. We got Nicholas Helmerson, the sniper. Reginald Conley, the two-way forward. And then Joseph Rogalski, the sniper. So hopefully these guys can see some decent growth. I've got more hope for Joseph Rogalski than I do Reginald Connolly or Nicholas Helmerson um, because he's 19, medium elite, and he's already 64, so he's got already looking to be great as far as growth-wise. But if, he, if, if these three guys can start growing for us, that would be fantastic too. And then defensively, I'm going to be playing Brisebois with Jordan Subban. Subban is probably going to be that 7th man. Hopefully he can get up to 78, maybe even a 79. That would be fantastic because that's a great 6th defenseman. Um, that you could call up or down when someone gets hurt. Then Breezebois, he's got low top six potential, 72, 23, so he may hit it, he may not, not too sure. Then we've got Evan McEnemy, who or McKennany, who's not really that important to me. Christopher Gunnarsson then as a seventh man. Hopefully we can see some uh, Jordan Subban type growth out of him. And then our bottom pairing, pretty weak. Uh, they're both 20 years of age in the f upper 50s. Uh, but they've got that medium top six potential, so we're going to see if getting them on the ice can grow them a little bit, guys. Uh, and then as far as goaltenders, we've got Godla here, who's still got some years of growth and could maybe grow to be that backup for us. I don't know if he's going to jump into the 80s, but if he could get up to 81, 82, he's certainly going to be cheaper than uh, uh, Jack, Jacob Markstrom or Jakob Mar Markstrom. And then Michael DiPietro here, he's 21, medium starter, 67. I'm going to play him as the backup, get him some ice time. But there we go. As far as there's no, nobody really that I want playing that's scratched. I mean, Nathan Dunkley, he's 57 overall, not really. I mean, I, Petrus Palmu is actually an interesting one. I was considering playing him. Let's see, we got medium backup, medium bottom six, medium top six, Dale Vickers. I'm going to see if he can grow on the bench there. Um, and, and then the rest of these guys, some some guys that, ah, Gadjevich is another guy that I think I might want playing. I'm not too sure. Gadjevich over someone like... Uh, uh, maybe Castles or something like that. I think maybe over Castles, we'll see who's scratched. And uh, Nathan Dunkley, is that? Yeah, he is a center. And then Thomas here, what is he? Okay, yeah, you know what? I'm going to put Akil Thomas in there. I think he was our first round pick our first season. Um, yeah, first round pick in 2018, sixth overall. So we're going to see if we can get him to grow for us. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to play anybody else. I may change my mind if you guys say to halfway through the season two. You guys let me know. But that is going to be the AHL squad this year. Um, I'm going to start focusing on it a little bit more than I have in past years. 
uh, just because I do want those guys growing. I don't want to have as many busts as I usually do, and I think it's my in a, uh, my my lack of decent playing time for these younger players just because I don't think they're ready because I usually sign players in free agency, and they're 24, 72, and I should really be giving the 20-year-olds who are 67 a chance. Uh, but there we go, guys. That is the roster. The, I didn't change anything up in the NHL besides putting Gaunt at center. So now let's go ahead and actually get the regular season started. Year number four. I think I'll go a couple months because I'm still... Um, treading lightly here, this team overperformed and overachieved last year. Uh, and I don't want to take that as an indication as to what we're going to do this year. Uh, but all I know is that, you know, I, I'm looking to make it, uh, to the second round, make a splash in the second round at least. So again, my goal is to get out of the first into the second. And then if we don't make it, cause Mike, personally, I want to make it to the Western conference, but I will settle for a really strong showing in, um, a strong showing in the second round. If we get knocked out in six or seven and just look good, like the puck just didn't bounce our way, I'm okay with getting eliminated that way, but I'd really like to make it back to the Western Conference Finals, if not the Stanley Cup, although back-to-back -back Stanley Cup appearances would be pretty tough considering I don't think this team is complete just yet. Um, hopefully we can get good Branson to grow because he does have decent... Um, he, he's, he's a good overall. I've seen his overall. Hopefully his uh, locker room interactions increase... Now, the locker room chemistry went up, so hopefully that means everybody is happy now. Uh, we got Bergey on that first line, and then, yeah, there we go, guys. So it was it was the right call to bring back Good Branson. He's an 82 and makes this defensive. I mean, his defensive defenseman allows Ole Levy to do what he does. Uh, they're, they're both very good defensively. I'd almost say Ole Levy's just as good, if not better defensively, uh, than Eric Good Branson, and he's only 22, you know, medium elite potential. So hopefully... We can get them to grow, but we got Hutton and D'Angelo, Good Branson, Yo Levy, and then Stone and Stetcher. Stone we have for one year at five million, which allows us to keep like it's a it's a rotating it's a rotating door. It's a revolving door back there on defense as far as who we have. But I think we're starting to see what the core is gonna be. We got Stetcher at that sixth defenseman. Hopefully Yo Levy grows quite well for us. We got Hutton, D'Angelo, and then Good Branson. Now ideally, Good Branson would be a fifth defenseman for me. Uh, and well, oh, I don't really know too many players. We just focused on, uh, drafting defensemen. So hopefully those guys are the guys that come up eventually and step up for us to fill that one other role that I don't see, uh, I don't see, uh, filled yet. And even Stetcher could be dispensable. You know, he, he, you know, if there's, if there's a better player out there, I could always let go of Stetcher, but there's two spots up for grabs. And I think we, right now for the next two or three seasons, we got our four defensemen here. If we could just find two players down here to go ahead and uh, just just solidify that and make it look like an all-star defensive core. Because offensively, Arturi Lekkonen is a guy that I want you guys to let me know what do you think I should do with him. He could be somebody with some potential that I could flip at the draft. Or not at the draft, at the trade deadline. You know, maybe this team, uh, we are a playoff team, but maybe another veteran. Or maybe flip him for a good defenseman. Uh, and call up someone like Reed Boucher or Louis Erickson even. Uh, and I saw you guys said I should have bought out Louis Erickson's contract. The only problem is I didn't want four years at two million. Um, I'd rather take either two years, because uh, this offseason would be the offseason I'd have to uh, buy him out. I think it would be three million on the cap this year and three million on the cap next year instead of two million uh, this year, next year, the year after, and I believe one more year after that. Uh, so that that was not what I wanted. I didn't want that because two million is a decent amount for a de that a long time. That's that's one of these guys down here, a bottom six player for that. Um, but you know, we just remember, guys, we got that money coming off the books soon. We'll have to make that decision. This is the real time I want to decide: Do I buy out Louis Erickson or not? Because we'll hit. Uh, I mean, only three million for two years. Uh, it, personally, in my opinion, that's better because it's over shorter, and I'm looking long term here. But there we go, guys. Those are the lines. You guys, let me know. There's the go a couple players that I mentioned I want to take a look at is is uh, Nikolai Goldobin growing on the second line where he's supposed to be playing or does he deserve first line ice time? Is he not growing or you know is Berchi just not performing? Do we need a shake up? Uh, a guy like Yule Levy is he growing? Is Stetcher holding his own back there with Stone? Uh, how's Good Branson doing? And then down there in the minors, we're gonna have to keep an eye on our elite line, the elite fourth line down there in the minors. Uh, but let's go ahead here. We'll start the first month of October. Um, I'm expecting a good month from us. I mean, we've got a pretty good roster, and I definitely think we should be... We should definitely get a divisional spot. We should not be looking to get wild card. And we start the season off with a win in St. Louis, so that is a great way to start your season. Then a 3-0 shutout win 
Uh, Back-to-back -back away games, and we get two wins out of it. Then we come home versus Vegas, win a close 6-5 to -five game there. Now we take a 2-0 loss, 2 nothing loss uh, to Ottawa, but then we beat the Florida Panthers. I don't mind losing to Ottawa because they're an Eastern Conference opponent. And they think it's going to be a good year for rookies, so I'll take that. We got a couple late round picks just from flipping some prospects uh, to improve the AHL rosters of other teams because our AHL roster was pretty much, a, it's a little bit too full. There are some players that I should probably let go and give more time to our younger guys. Um, and as far as this draft this year, I think we're again going to focus on defensemen. Hopefully we hit on that really, really stud defensive prospect and, you know, we can, because forward wise, we got tons of forwards, but I really don't see a lot of good defenseman prospects in the pipeline. So that's, again, what I'm going to focus on. I know we just drafted some pretty decent ones, but um, I definitely think defenseman is still an area on this team where I want to uh, fix because in free agency, we've addressed forwards quite, quite well. We've gotten Vander Kane and uh, Artemi Panarin, the Artemi Panarin signing, you know, was a great signing. He's been a leader on this team, just absolutely fantastic for us. And pretty good first month. <laughs> Seven, two and one. Holy shit. I was too busy talking. I didn't even realize how good we were doing. Let's go see what's going on as far as point leaders, who is leading the team in points. And it's Bo Horvat with seven goals in nine games played. Jesus. Good God, Bo Horvat. He is absolutely, he's filling the net. Uh, we're right. We're only behind the Los Angeles Kings by three points, and we got two games in hand on them. But I guess ten games into the season can't really determine the success of your team. But I do like the way we're looking uh, with a seven-two and zero record. I will definitely take that through month number one, which makes me not want to stop and look at any of the stats just yet. Uh, we will go ahead and simulate another month, and I might even get up to January first in this video, guys. Uh, year number four is usually where we uh, start to quick sim, but. I want to see how this team performs because don't forget, we're not out of the rebuild just yet. I know we made it to the Stanley Cup, guys, and I saw that that a lot of you guys were like, oh my god, how'd you make it to the Stanley Cup? Uh, I think the team just got rolling towards the end of the season. We got hot, and I don't want that. I don't want to rest on that. I want to still improve the roster because there is a lot of area for improvement on this team. Uh, and I definitely think that, you know, if we improve it, we can be perennial cup contenders. I don't want to be just a flash in the pan team that's like, oh my god, we made it to the Stanley Cup finals, and now we're going to go ahead and, you know, be super pumped about that and not have to worry about improving certain areas, don't need to pay players. Okay, and Vander Kane is really happy about what he's doing. And then Eric Goodbranson, uh, he's not feeling very positive. Everybody goes through rocky patches. Um, was not affected. Okay, so he's probably a guy that likes motivating. I'll keep that in mind for the next next one. But uh, after a 2 nothing shutout loss against the Leafs, we beat Dallas 5 nothing. Then we just followed that up with back-to-back -back losses. So I don't, I don't like to see the losses piling up, although we're having a very good start to the season. Um, there we go. So we'll go ahead and forwards for one month. There we go. Actually, wait a second. I think I might have told my assistant coach to edit lines down there in the minors, and I swear to God, if he screwed up the lines uh, that I had, I'm going to be quite upset with them. Uh, because I wanted those guys to be playing down there like they were. Although, Rodrigo Abels, uh, why did I just hit edit player? I, Jesus. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to talk too fast, and I'm not thinking through what I'm doing here. So I want to go check, did I have assistant coach edit the lines down in the minors? I think I might have turned it on minimal. I hope I didn't turn it on yes. Uh, where is it? Assistant co Minor league assistant coach. Ah, shoot. Minimal. I wanted minimal because I don't want them adjusting everything that we've changed down there. I accidentally hit A instead of B. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go check out the lines, and if there is something screwed up, we will. I will cut that part out of the video, but if it's all set to go, then we'll just keep going, and I'll just keep talking to you guys about what I'm thinking with this team. Now, I definitely think that this is the core of this is the core group of guys I want to keep around, AHL. Er wow, Erickson's back up to an 81. Are you kidding me? He is loving that AHL time, and yeah, they did screw up what I was hoping to do here, so I'm going to be right back, guys. Uh, I'll go edit the lines and I'll show you guys all the changes I made in just a second Okay guys, so they did change everything and I fixed it uh, for the most part I'm gonna keep Louis Erickson on that first line with uh, Dennis Yan. He's a sniper I know and he's a left wing I know but his face-offs are actually pretty good So I would like to keep him playing and then Cole Lind is also gonna play up there on that top line still Then we've got Reed Boucher, Rodrigo Abels and Maxime Comtois and then on the third line I'm starting to play um, less of the bottom six forward potential and more top nine guys and the top six guys. So we've got Gadjevich here, Jonah Gadjevich, 
22 years of age, 65, not too bad of a player. Akil Thomas, who was our first round pick in season number one, and then Joseph Rogalski, who we picked in the first round in year number two. Then on the fourth line, we've got Helmerson here. He was the third round in year number two. Reginald Connolly was our second first round pick in year number two. And then Petrus Palmu was a pick already made by the Vancouver Canucks. So I'm going to get him playing. He's 23, low top nine. See if we can get any kind of growth out of him. Hopefully we can, but uh, we might have already lost that cause. But I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm flipping the lines. I mean, Comtois, I mean, should not necessarily be playing there because there's other players that I scratched. Uh, that should be. I thought I saw a uh, meeting. I'm not sure. I might have been just delusional. But okay, defensively, I'm keeping everything the same. Noah Dobson and Giovanni Vallotti, they have not been too tremendous together, but at least ice time should make them grow. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, I did have the assistant coach edit line. You know what? I'm going to turn that off right now. I'm going to go turn off any kind of assistant coach editing the lines. Uh, because I made the decision like overnight that I want to start micromanaging the AHL squad and not have to deal with uh, the assistant coach screwing up the players that I have already in there. So, you know, I'm going to turn that completely off. Uh, and nope, completely off. There we go. I only want to get notified when players are fully heal healed because you guys saw what happened last year when I tried to rush some players back because I thought we needed them for a playoff push. Uh, it just ended up stunting them a little bit more than I would have liked. And as far as, wow, Bo Horvat has 14 goals in 19 games and 19 points. We're almost here at the end of November, so once we get to the end of November, I'll do a complete recap, but let's go ahead here, simulate just these next three games against Edmonton, Arizona, and Vegas, so three pretty important games. Uh, I believe they're all three Pacific Division opponents. We lose to the Oilers, which isn't great, but they are a good team. Troy Stetcher has injured his groin, and we're going to call up Subban, uh, just because you guys know that he is the first defenseman up, that seventh defenseman for us. Edit the lines, and he's not, he, you know, I'm going to fill his spot. Uh, and then we'll just go down to the AHL. We'll fill his spot uh, with just whoever it might be. I'm not too worried about what the AHL squad is thinking. Yeah, because we got some pretty decent, like Sauntner here. Yeah, he can fill in for, um, oh, edit. Wait, what edit slots? Currently have unfilled slots in a shootout. Okay. So, Subban was on the shootout in the AHL. That's interesting. We'll put Louis Erickson, Reed Boucher, uh, Rogalski will go up there, Akil Thomas, and we'll put Helmerson, I think. Uh, all skaters. Who do we not have in there? Uh, we got some of those guys. Cole, as Colin, no, he's a two way forward. Uh, what is, um, I'm pretty sure Helmerson. Yeah, Helmerson's a sniper, so we'll put him in there as well. And there we go. I think we're all set as far as lines are concerned. And there we go. We'll keep it going. Versus Arizona, we lose. That's a... F Whoa, my God. We are just shat the bed. We went on a five-game losing streak, brought our record way back down to earth, and now we're 12-9-1. and one. But we do just absolutely blow out Vegas in their own building, who's 5-20-1. and one. So George McPhee is not doing a great job with Vegas right now. Their plan has not gone according to plan. They have five wins in 26 played. Oh, my God. That is awful. Uh, as far as where we are in the standings, we are in a wild card position, but we are only out of second place by one single point, guys. So again, it's a super close Pacific division, and the Kings are starting to pull away with it, but I still think we can catch them. We got a game in hand, which puts us up to 27 if we win it, and then we're four points back, and four points at 20 games into the season is nothing too, uh, not, not, not too big of a deficit to overcome. But we got to make sure, wow, look at D'Angelo, 20 points for, he's second on the team in points, only behind Bo Horvat, but he's a plus six. Very interesting there. So as far as players that aren't performing, you know who I don't see, I don't even see Berchi. Where the hell, wait, wait, where, oh, there he is, he's got 10 points, okay. He's got 10 points, which is good enough for a third worst on the team, and Nikolai Goldobin has 15 points, um... Yeah, I'm, I'm playing him on the second line. I'm almost positive. That second line seems to be clicking, so I don't think I'm going to move him. Uh, Evander Kane, I think, would just take away from Horvat scoring the puck because Horvat seems to have been lighting the lamp right now, even though Panarin's got the 92 accuracy. Oh, my God. Jesus, Panarin has grown to be a monster for us. But maybe this should be the first line. Horvat, unless Goldobin is on the first line, and I'm just forgetting that I moved him up there. D'Angelo with 20 points, four goals, 16 assists. So he's really actually that he, what where the right wing should be in points. D'Angelo is actually up there, so that's awesome to see uh, that that trade that they offered me. I didn't I didn't go out and acquire 
D'Angelo. He was offered to me, and I just decided to accept the trade. And then in goal tent, in the net, Thatcher Demko could have a better season. 915 save percentage, 241 goal against average. Was probably ruined this five-game losing streak. He was probably playing quite well for us uh, when we were 12 or 11, 4 and 1. But uh, I'm going to go double check the lines here, guys. I want to make sure that I didn't. Um, yeah, Berchi is playing on that first line, and he's not really doing well. He's got three goals and seven assists, where Goldobin's got four goals and 11 assists. So he's got five more points than Berchi does on that second line. Although, if he is listed as a second line, for that second line is really killing it for us. Although, whoa, Granlin's shooting percentage is way up there. So I don't expect that to be the same. How is Horvat? Horvat is scoring on 24% of his shots. So one in every four shots he takes goes in the net. Holy God, Jesus. Okay, so I don't think Horvat's going to keep up that goal pace. Although if he does, if he keeps scoring at a 24% clip, I'm going to be really happy. Uh, and then look at Elias Pettersson scoring on 14% of his shots. Uh, and same thing with Jake Furtanen here. And Brandon Gauntz has got a lot of assists, so I'll, I'll take that. As far as defensively, they're going to have lower shooting percentages, obviously. D'Angelo not doing too bad. Yo Ole Yolevi not doing too bad. Uh, and then these guys have yet to score a goal. So that bottom pairing, I, I mean, I guess Jordan Subban is a plus, but Mark Stone being that defensive defenseman, helping out Jordan. I mean, Jordan Subban just came up. Never mind. I should I should have checked out Troy Stetcher, but that's okay. I'm feeling confident about this team. I think I'm good to go ahead and go another month and then get your guys' opinion on what I should be doing, unless I'm royally screwing something up, and then I'm sure you guys will already comment that down in the comment section. But again, if you guys have any suggestions or anything you notice that I'm doing glaringly wrong, please let me know. And now Troy Stetcher is fully healed. Thank goodness. And you know what? Now it's nice because that's a really nice feature. I'm glad they added that in there because... Uh, Troy Stetcher, because now I don't have to worry about, well, he's, I got to wait and make sure he's not scratched a game or two, and then he's going to get pissed, and no, I'm, I'm glad that now I can just have the game tell me, is he fully healed and ready to go back in, because they're not going to get pissed uh, if they're not fully healed, and I, if, they, if they're able to play again, and um, Jordan Subban's lost morale for being sent down, yeah, I know, I but you weren't really doing too much for us up here, he was a plus two though, so I guess that is, I guess you could say he was doing something for us. Uh, but you are very, very good down there in the AHL. Not Sontner. I want Subban. All right, seven goals, one assist down there in the AHL. Yeah, you are you're not too pleased with it? Well, I'm going to need you to uh, prove to me that you should stay up in the NHL. But he hasn't. So, I mean, he hasn't grown enough to be considered putting in over Stetcher. A 4-3 win followed up by a 6-1 loss. Now the results are getting a little bit closer. A 4-1 win over the abysmal Vegas Golden Knights. I want to know what the Vegas Golden Knights record is at the end of this video because that's about halfway through the season here. All right, we pick it back up with three straight wins. Then against St. Louis, and wow, the offense came alive there. Good God, 10-2 win. A uh, 4-1 win. This is, there we go. Maybe, was it Stetcher? Is it just the, what the hell? I put Stetcher back in. I guess Stetcher is the key to this team. We would have won the Stanley Cup last year if Stetcher would have been healthy. Uh, but no, I had to put Subban in there, so that's why we weren't winning. Um, recent individual, hey, Stetcher, I mean, if you when you come in, the team plays great, so I really don't know what to tell you, man. You are doing fantastic. Tampa Bay, another win. Good God, December is our month. Oh my God, a 2-0 shutout win against the Buffalo Sabres. I don't want to speak too soon, but this has been an amazing month. We, uh, a 2-3 shootout, a 3-2 shootout win. Now against Edmonton, headed to Edmonton and Anaheim, two tough Pacific Division opponents, and now Good Branson has injured his elbow. I gotta call up Jordan Subban yet again, which is very unfortunate, because Good Branson, I think, was doing pretty well for us. Subban, uh, and it's nice to know that, I mean, Erickson got much better playing down there in the AHL. I did not expect that. I expected him to just be pissed and demand a trade out of Vancouver, but... Uh, if he's gonna, you you know what, we're gonna put Stone in there, uh, and I want to put in Subban, I'm gonna have to figure out, I don't want to substitute him in all lines, the next line is the penalty kill, yes, the penalty kill, we'll move Stone up there with D'Angelo, because D'Angelo's an offensive defenseman, uh, Yo, Levy's got a pretty good defensive stats, and he's up to an 82, so that's pretty nice to see, again, we'll move Stone up to play, the, to put the defensive defenseman with D'Angelo, Hutton and Ole Yolevi. So there we go. Yolevi is actually doing great for us. Oop. And 3v3 lines uh, and 4v4 aren't 100% correct. So with Stone, we'll put Yolevi. Uh, and then we'll put Yolevi down. Uh, switch. Uh, yeah. Yolevi and Stetcher. So now it'll be Subban and Stetcher. This is just a little things. I know you guys are probably going to kill me because I uh, didn't switch out of the video. 
uh, right away, but, um, well, yeah, put the old lady there. It's, it was a quick sw switch. What was it, that, like, uh, 30 seconds for you guys? Back to edit lines. Ah, and then I'll just, uh, play somebody in, yeah, I'll put Slauntner back in here, uh, and substitute him in all lines, because I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I gotta check the AHL squad, how they're doing, too, and then look at a 5-1 loss, but a 4-1 win, so, man, December was our freaking month. We lost game one, we lost game three, and then we went on a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine game winning streak, and won, what is that? Uh, uh, 11, uh, uh, we went 11 and three in the month of December, and now we're 23, 12 and one as we hit January 1st. So I'm gonna go check out the stats and the standings. Uh, standing's a pretty easy one. Vancouver Canucks, we are three points behind the LA Kings. I told you guys we could catch them after that really hot December. Holy crap. This team, Stetcher is the key. I, I, that's, that's, that's all I can tell you guys. Stetcher, when this team is healthy, we play amazing. The problem is we don't necessarily have the depth on the defensive end, and that's what I want to acquire because the defensive core is pretty good right now. But the depth, oh my god, D'Angelo is leading the team in points. Oh my god, I just realized that. Holy crap, D'Angelo has 37 points to lead the team. Panarin is a point per game. Horvat's a point per game. Guys, I, you guys let me know because I really want to put Goldobin on that first line. But he is loving the ice time he's getting there on the second line. And he is killing the competition he's playing with. Kane has 22 points. He's benefiting from Goldobin. Delian here, 22 points. Playing better than Granlin, but you know, not too, by too much. Delian Besser and ooh, Arturi Lekkinen, guys. Is he somebody we maybe flip for that 7th D-man and call up, dare I say it, Louis Erickson to play there? <laughs> or what do you guys think? Um, Elias Pettersson, not having the greatest rookie year, but he is playing there on the fourth line, not getting any extra ice time. So, I mean, I wish I could tell how how much average, what's his average time on ice? Because he's not getting any power play time. Ah, time on ice per game. Oh, they do keep it in there. That's actually pretty nice. He's only getting 11 minutes per game. So, nine points, not too terrible. <coughs> I want to figure out what 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 is Goldobin's time on ice. Oh, he might be getting first line power play. He's got nine power play points. He's got fifteen and a half minutes of ice time per game, which is pretty damn good. Uh, Berchi though, what is his ice time on ice? Uh, time on ice is seventeen, so he is getting more minutes and not producing at the level. And he's also on the power play, so he's a minus nine. He's not really helping out that first line very much. Uh, I don't know, guys. He He's not doing tremendous, so you guys let me know. Is it Goldobin or Berchi on that first line? Uh, I, the rest of the lines, I think I'm very okay with. The only All right, so a couple questions for you guys here. Do we trade Arturi Lekkinen, or is he performing up to the level that we think he should be with 12 minutes on ice per game? Uh, in 36 games, he's put in 15 points. Uh, they, oh, I can just do it from here. Pretty nice. Uh, yeah, 12 minutes on the ice per game, and he's only getting put in 15 points in 36. I guess that's not terrible, considering his ice time. As far as power play points, Panarin and Horvat are just killing it, and Goldobin. <coughs> Goldobin's only got nine, so he's a third highest in power play points, but I can't, I don't think you can point to that as why he's better than Berchi, because Berchi has seven. So he's got eight more points and only two more power play points. Um, let's see, who's getting the most time on ice as far as forwards? Yep, Panarin. Horvat, Berchi, Kane, Goldobin, Granlin, as it should be. Pedersen, and you know what? I'm pretty proud of Vertanen for only ha for having single digits time on ice. He's got 16 points in, what what is that, nine and a half minutes of ice time? So I'm okay with that. And there we go. So I'm actually just happy I could find the time on ice stat. I did, didn't know they actually tracked that. Uh, points, and now defensemen, yeah. I mean, D'Angelo, 37 points in 36 games. Absolutely fantastic. Flying around the ice, doing... He's our Eric Carlson. We, I, I, I don't know who else to compare him to because what other defenseman in the NHL leads their team in points? I mean, maybe Brent Burns, but, I mean, I, the guy everybody knows is Eric Carlson. He's the offensive defenseman. And I would say D'Angelo is doing that quite well for us. Uh, now, as far as goaltending is concerned, Thatcher Demko hasn't stepped his game up but Jakob Markstrom certainly has with 934 and a 185. So he's only played in eight games, but he's certainly dominated in those games he's played in. Thatcher Demko, 915, 248. So I'd like to see Demko have a better season than this. Uh, he, I mean, maybe he's got some uh, postseason hangover there. You know, he played so well in the postseason. And he got a little bit uh, rocked in the, in the final series against the Washington Capitals. So maybe his confidence isn't quite as high as it should be. 
Or, you know, you'd like to see it. Maybe he's in his own head. He's still playing well, though. I mean, 2-5, 9-15. You'd like to see 9-20 and 2-4. Uh, maybe 2-3, two, 2-3. Three, two, three. I'd, 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 rather, I'd rather see 2-3, 9-20 uh, from a guy like Thatcher Demko. But I guess that's okay. And as far as rookie skaters, yeah, Elias Pettersson, probably not anywhere close to the league lead as far as rookie skaters. Yeah, this uh, Clarence Pritch Pritchett. Oh, God, this guy's actually pretty damn good. Uh, Cody Glass is playing well. Joe Valeno. Alex DeBrincat. So maybe Elias Pettersson. Uh, I mean, so he's on the Suzuki path as far as age and overall. I'd really like to see him jump. I guess I didn't start him down in the minors soon enough and play him well. But a lot of these guys are minuses. All this all this Clarence Pritchett guy is killing it right now. Uh, and let's go... Actually, let's go check our... Um, in the entire league. Wow. Tyler Sagan. Have your... Holy shit. Him and Jamie Benn. Good God, the Dallas Stars are nasty. This is that this is that part of the of the simulation, guys, when the Dallas Stars just get nasty. They just get absolutely raw as far as point production. I mean, 50 points per player in 38 and 36 games. I mean, that's just not fair. Uh, <laughs> we'll go check out our stats down there in the AHL. Who is performing? And Reed Boucher, Louis Erickson. Look at that. Cole Lind doing well for us. Abels, Yan, Ar Akil Thomas has got 15 points. Uh, let's see, Jordan Supan, no, Comtois, Rogalski, Conley, Reginald Conley here, uh, Matt, make, no, I didn't know, he's not important, uh, Helmerson here is important, he's only got three goals in 32 games, did I start playing these guys maybe too soon, Paul Moose got two points in 17 games played, Gadjevitz got one point, and yeah, so, am I doing something wrong with the AHL squad, you guys let me know, because I do want these players to grow, but let's go ahead and check out the progress reports, and hopefully these guys are growing, because I want them to grow, and I want to get... Uh, within the system, get some pretty damn good players for us to utilize. So let's go ahead here, check the progress reports, and then I think that should be the end of this video. And Because the qu couple questions I had were, bear to your Goldoven, guys, and what do we do with Arturi Lekkanen, and help me out with this AHL squad. So, in the NHL, our Temi Panarin is growing statistically even more. What the hell? This dude just loves... Pl he came to Vancouver... Because I gave him a big paycheck and I think he saw the future of this team and knew that he could be the dominant figure in the locker room and on the ice. And boy, is he showing it. I mean, that is great. That's your Demko. Also growing statistically, so I will take that. Um, wow, every, Jesus. Do not shoot stick side low on him because you will never score ever. Like ever. 98 stick low. Good God. Uh, breakaway and angles could get better, but you know, his recovery is up in the 90s now. Um, his poise is only 76, but, you know, that'll go up with age. Didn't mean to switch to UL Levy there. And as far as his athleticism, durability is not too great, but I'm not too worried. His vision, I mean, his speed, endurance, agility, Jesus. All right, Yoli UL Levy is playing well for us. He's not doing well, statistically deking, although I don't know why he's upset because he's, I don't expect him to deke. Anyway, his wrist shot is actually going way down because of his statistical growth. And his defense is going down because of his statistical growth. I don't want to see that. His endurance and speed is going down. What am I doing wrong with Ole Yulevi? Or is it he just not simulating well? Is Do I not have him with the right partner? You know what? I kind of want to give Ole Yulevi first line minutes and play him with D'Angelo. You guys let me know what you think of that idea. Because D'Angelo, really, really killing it for us. I mean, I've never had a defenseman simulate this well ever. Like, this is just fantastic for us. Uh, maybe put him with Yule Levy and get Yule Levy the points that he wants to have. Elias Pettersson growing pretty well. I mean, a lot of it seems to be morale right now just because he's playing. But we do see some actual growth. His skating's going up. That's great. Uh, Vertanen still growing. Horvat, a couple of his uh, statistical categories are going up. Nothing too important there. Delian growing a little bit. Berchi's, uh maybe, yeah, he dropped off one in offensive awareness there. That's the only place he's dropping. But... Now, in the system, Cole Lind is the only player really growing halfway through the season. Maxime Comtois growing a little bit here and there. I think it's growth anyway. I hope it's not uh, recession. Um, regression, not recession. Oh, God. Finance class today. Fun. Um, Rogalski here. Ah, uh, yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm going to stop s scrolling through here, guys, because you guys are probably getting bored of this. Uh, but let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know any suggestions you might have about the AHL squad. The AHL squad, not really simulating all that well. But... Is it because I'm not playing, you know, the best talent we have out there and playing the young guys, giving them a shot? Uh, should I not be playing those defensemen? Uh, you guys let me know. Thoughts on the AHL. Thoughts on what we do with Arturi Lekkinen. And thoughts on that first line with Berchi or Goldovin. 
Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see some more, and I will see you guys in the next one.